The Death of the Emperor Galba Suetonius reports From the very beginning of his reign, many portents appearing in rapid succession foretold the precise fate of Galba. Sacrificial animals were slain beside the road in the towns through which he passed. In one place, an ox, enraged by a misplaced axe-blow, broke its bonds and charged at the emperor's chariot. As it bucked and kicked with its rear legs, it spouted a deluge of blood over Galba. As he dismounted, one of his guards was pushed forward by the crowd and almost wounded Galba with his lance. When Galba first entered Rome and made his way into the imperial palace, there was a sudden earth tremor that sounded like cattle lowing. Other, even clearer signs of future events followed. From all the treasures he received, Galba set aside just one object. It was a necklace fashioned from pearls and precious stones, and he kept this to adorn an image of the goddess Fortuna at Tusculum. But on a sudden impulse, he consecrated the necklace instead to the goddess Venus on the Capitoline. He thought that she had a higher divinity and was more worthy of the gift. The next night, Fortuna appeared to him in his dreams. The goddess complained that she had been robbed of the gift intended for her, and she threatened to take away a gift that she had bestowed on Galba. At daybreak, the terrified Galba planned an immediate journey to Tusculum to perform sacrifices to placate the goddess. He sent men ahead to prepare for the ceremony, but when he arrived, the men were nowhere to be seen. When he approached the altar, he found nothing but warm ashes. An old man was standing next to the sacrifice, dressed in black funeral robes. This man was holding an offering of incense in a glass dish and a small measure of wine in an earthen cup. Later, when Galba was sacrificing on the calends of January, the garland fell from his head into the freshly spilled blood. Then, when he took the auspices from the temple birds, the sacred chickens flew away. Also, when he was about to address the soldiers on the day of his official inauguration, he found that his imperial seat had not been placed on the tribunal. This was due to the forgetfulness of his attendants, but later, in a meeting of the Senate, his curile chair was discovered to have been placed facing the wrong way. Galba offered a sacrifice on the morning before he was killed. During the ceremony, a soothsayer warned him again and again to look out for danger, since assassins were near. Not long afterwards, Galba learned that Otho had taken possession of the main military camp. Several advisers urged him to head immediately into the camp and try to regain control using his presence and imperial prestige. But Galba decided to remain where he was and strengthen his current position. He summoned a strong guard of legionaries, men who were encamped in many different quarters of the city. Meanwhile, for his own protection, Galba put on a linen cuirass, though he openly declared that such light armour would provide little protection against so many swords. Galba was then lured into danger by false reports. These reports were circulated by the conspirators to make the emperor reappear in public. Advisers rashly assured Galba that the disturbances had ended and the rebels had been suppressed. They said that a group of soldiers were coming to offer their congratulations and receive their new orders. Galba therefore went out to meet them with great confidence. When one of the soldiers boasted that he had slain Otho, Galba asked him, On whose authority? These soldiers accompanied Galba to the forum, where an ambush had been set. Cavalry were waiting in the nearby streets, with orders to slay the emperor. Suddenly, they spurred their horses into action, scattering the civilian crowds as they advanced. When they caught sight of the emperor in the distance, 
They halted momentarily. Then they charged. His followers fled. Galba was abandoned, and he was butchered where he stood. Some say that when the disturbance began, Galba cried out, What is your purpose, fellow soldiers? I am yours, and you are mine. He may even have promised them monetary rewards. But the more popular account is that Galba offered no resistance, and even presented his exposed neck to his attackers. He urged them to do their duty and strike, if that was truly their will. It might seem surprising that no one present came to assist their emperor, but all who were sent the summons treated the command with contempt, except for a company of Germanic troops. This was because Galba had recently shown them compassion and consideration when they were suffering and weakened by an illness. They rushed to his assistance, but they were not familiar with the layout of the city. They did not take the most direct route, and arrived too late to intervene. Galba was killed beside the pool-like pit in the Forum called the Lacus Curtius. He was left lying where he had fallen, until an ordinary soldier who was returning from a distribution of grain rations passed by. The soldier saw him and threw away the grain he was carrying to cut off the head of the former emperor. Since there was no hair that could be grasped, the soldier tucked the head under his robe. He thrust his thumb into the open mouth to carry it. He brought the trophy to Otho, who handed it to his servants and military attendants. A few days earlier, someone had flattered Galba in jest by saying that he still looked young and vigorous. Galba had replied, Thank you. As yet my strength is unimpaired. So they placed the head on a lance and paraded it about the camp with jeers, yelling out, Galba, you Cupid, exult in thy vigour. Suetonius, Life of Galba, passages 18 to 20.